Our special report on freedom and accountability in these tense times and about this. The president suggested shooting migrants in the legs. Seriously, Mr. President? What is the matter with you? The words of a president, the words of dissent. We will return to that and to Don Lemon, but we begin with why Elon Musk and Ron DeSantis have been caught cracking down on free speech, a concept that famously dates to the late 1700s when the First Amendment to the Constitution stated, quote, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. Today, some of the most prominent people attacking freedom of speech are government officials and very rich people who cannot handle free speech or criticism. And there's nothing new about that. It's exactly why the founders made this the very First Amendment, to combat the expected and understandable familiar censorship that occurs by the powerful when they can get away with it. What is new and different today is that free speech has, over the years, become such a popular tradition, such a good brand, as they say, that now even its opponents pretend to be for it as they crack down on free speech. So let me show you how. It's actually pretty simple. Like I mentioned, the First Amendment prohibits laws abridging freedom of speech. And a Republican governor comes out here and passes a law abridging freedom of speech while also loudly claiming he's protecting speech. Republican Governor Ron DeSantis' claim is false, downright Orwellian, but for people who only see the headlines or hear the sound bites, it could be confusing. Here's the bottom line. DeSantis helped pass this new Florida law that restricts First Amendment rights. As the nonpartisan First Amendment organization FIRE summarizes it, you see right there. The law tries to limit digital companies' speech rights and choices. And it's so extreme that it's now pending review before a pretty skeptical Supreme Court. We'll come back to that as well. But first, it is vital to see how this playbook stretches from conservative politicians who know better, DeSantis went to Harvard Law School, all the way out to the right-leaning billionaires who use their immense power to attack and control free speech, and they spend money to sue and punish people for free speech. Sometimes they even buy entire media tech companies to take even more control over speech, while they also tend to claim that they are the true billionaire liberators of free speech. Hmm, who might fit the bill? Well, I bet you can guess. But here's a clue from a federal judge who just made a new ruling against billionaire Elon Musk, who bought Twitter, for a separate effort he was trying to achieve. As the judge put it, Musk trying to censor and punish speech by a group which monitors and counters digital hate. One account noting the judge tossed the whole case in an excoriating rebuke to Musk's anti-free speech agenda. The judge found Musk was wrong to try to use the courts to punish the Center for Countering Digital Hate for its protected speech. Judge also wrote that Musk brought this expensive federal case against seeming critics, likely with the intent to dissuade others who might wish to engage in such criticism of Elon Musk or X, formerly Twitter. Now that is a judge rebuking Elon Musk for abusing the courts to try to silence the free speech of others. Musk lost. And this is an important point before I go any further. Free speech is not art. It's not some subjective debate with no final answer over what is good art or, or what even constitutes art. Musk and DeSantis may wish this was all subjective, that we could debate Jeff Kuhn's balloons and talk about it and no one would have the answer, but this ain't that. They might wish it was subjective so they could conceal their anti-speech agenda in a kind of an endless debate, but free speech in America is actually law. It is a set of rules and precedents which protect speech and speakers and publishers against censorship and other interference, usually against censorship by the government. Free speech is also a set of principles that can be applied beyond the strict realm of government. 
Musk loudly claimed he would use that approach, the idea of free speech principles, to open Twitter up to more free speech. And he emphasized that would obviously require the principle of respecting and including opposing views. Free speech is meaningless unless you allow people uh, you don't like to say things you don't like. We must protect free speech. Well, I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech. And if at the point at which you lose uh, free speech, uh, it doesn't come back. Musk warning, you can't get free speech back. If the powerful crack down on those opposing views, you lose it and you don't get it back. And that brings us to Don Lemon, an anchor known for both serious reporting and some controversy. You have heard a lot of people talking about what the police are doing wrong here in Ferguson. But that's not the entire story. The Supreme Court ruling with a Colorado baker tonight who refused to bake a cake to celebrate the marriage of a same-sex couple. Black people, if you really want to fix the problem, here's just five things. Here's number five. Pull up your pants. Nikki Haley is in her prime. The ruling leads broader constitutional questions of civil rights and religious liberty. Sorry. When a woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. Three, two, one, Now, Don Lemon is now an independent host who recently briefly partnered with Musk to carry a show on X. And Lemon echoed Musk's claims, touting X as, quote, the biggest space for free speech in the world. That claim did not even last through the first edition of the show. And you might recall all of this because this was a whole controversy when it debuted last month. The show began by interviewing Musk, who was so upset with the questions and the topics that he immediately retaliated against Lemon, against the thing he used to say he would protect, opposing views, ideas he didn't like, by canceling their deal. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? We don't promote hate speech. So you want censorship and I don't? No, I don't want censorship at Yes, all. you do. No, I want responsibility. Why would, this, why would that question upset you? You seem upset by it, are you? I think you... And I'm not trying to upset you. The, well, you are upsetting me. A high-profile deal between two unlikely partners imploding. Hours later, Lemon says he received a short text from Musk that read, contract is canceled. You know something went wrong when you're asked to leave Twitter. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're no longer welcome in our community of flat earth incel Nazis. Now, it was a swift reversal. Many people noted the obvious hypocrisy by Musk and the anti-speech agenda of only running a show if it agreed with Musk's views. And there are actually several points here. One is Musk could not handle even a single day of the opposing views that he claimed he was so forcefully going to advocate that were required under free speech. That's a pretty obvious point. Two is the point that Musk and X still do have the legal freedom to make these calls. They can pay for a show or not, promote it or not. They can let people publish, or they can limit, pause, or block people from publishing. And I'm going to come back to that. Again, these are complex matters, so I'm going to come back to the point of their freedom. But three, and this brings us to some news that is pending in the Supreme Court. Who would be trying to take away that right from Musk, the right he currently has? And I would explain why he legally has it. But that right that the X or any company or publisher has to say they do or don't publish a show. Who's out there trying to silence Musk? Now, you can't make it up. It is his supposed right-wing free speech fellow traveler, Ron DeSantis. I mentioned we'd get back to him, and now we will. If Ron DeSantis got his way, the Florida government could force X or Facebook or these companies to publish material it opposes, to make X continue, for example, a show, whether it be by Don Lemon or somebody else. So this whole debacle actually shows why DeSantis is likely to lose at the Supreme Court. At that argument last month, most justices leaned against the Republican efforts in Florida by DeSantis and Texas, which has a similar copycat bill, to crack down on publishers' speech and dictate what tech companies publish or post. And so I'm going to play this part for you because this is big. This is national rules, law of the land stuff. But here we're going to listen as Obama and Trump appointees seem to come together against DeSantis, pressing the DeSantis side on why a state government 
should be able to enforce made up government restrictions on what publishers or tech companies do with their freedom to publish. Why isn't that, a, uh, you know, a, a, a classic First Amendment violation for the state to come in and say we're not allow going to allow you to enforce those sorts of restrictions? Could Florida enact a law telling bookstores that they have to put everything out by alphabetical order? When a private individual or private entity makes decisions about what to include and what to exclude, that's protected, generally, editorial uh, discretion. Just tell me why this doesn't look like the same kind of editorial control we see newspapers exercise. And went on like that, which gives us some clue as to where the Supreme Court may be headed. The theme that independent publishers make these calls, whether they're stocking bookshelves or Twitter streams or anything in between. And so if you don't follow all of this, just keep in mind it's Ron DeSantis self-appointed free speech advocate who's actually trying to crush the rights of people like Elon Musk to decide what they want to do. Because again, this ain't art. It's law. And you can't just say you're for the thing you're against and expect to get away with it. Certainly not before the Supreme Court. So keep those justices really fair questions in mind when you listen to what DeSantis has been telling people for years, that he has been doing this to protect free speech. We are protecting Floridians' ability to speak and express their opinions. Massive, massive companies uh, in Silicon Valley are exerting a power over our population. This will lead to more speech, not less speech. Well, many judges disagree, and the Supreme Court will have the final word in the ruling this term for those oral arguments we just heard a little bit of. So you take it together from Musk's new loss in court that I mentioned, the judge saying, no, you're trying to abuse power to punish speech, to the very public fallout with Don Lemon, which showed exactly how much speech Elon Musk could handle for how long, to the actual agenda of these Republican state laws interfering with free speech, trying to use government, a direct First Amendment violation, to control or veto or double check what independent companies and publishers do. Take that all together, and if you actually are listening and paying attention and the courts are going to decide this, then you realize this years-long set of right-wing Orwellian claims looks completely absurd. I think big tech censorship is the single greatest threat to free speech in America. Apparently, the algorithm has effectively existed to censor conservatives on the basis of their political views. It's Republicans who seem in conservative content that seems to be getting censured. You'll notice each of those people were political partisans. Claims by partisans for partisan purposes, recycling a playbook where often right-wing men say they are the victims of these powerful forces, and that justifies their anger and their politics and whatever crackdowns they seek. So tonight, I'm trying to bring this all together for you because this stuff matters. It's not going away. And I would tell you, instead of listening to the partisans trying to claim they are your freedom fighter, it is logical to be wary of partisans who say they suddenly claim about, care about free speech, especially when they don't have a record of credibility on the issue, and that when they engage on free speech issues, it tends to follow their self-interest, political or financial. The reality in this area is actually a lot more complicated. So let me put it like this. There are some on the right who oppose this type of free speech because they think it hurts their political cause. There are some specifically in the Republican Party who oppose it because they increasingly see publishers using their rights to limit how people post online for efforts that connect with violence or hate or crime, which apparently impacts the Republican Party that is increasingly minimizing or outright defending those things, including violent insurrectionists and other conspiracy theories. And there are issues uh, across the spectrum. There are those on the left who attack free speech because they literally oppose the airing of certain views. Colleges, for example, have seen over 40 efforts to deplatform the peaceful presentation of views of protected speech in just the first three months of this year, according to a database from that free speech group I mentioned earlier, FIRE. 
And some of those cases involve groups that self-identify as progressive, basically saying they don't want to hear an alternative view on campus. They want to prevent it from being shared peacefully. The actual First Amendment protects even horrific views from censorship. The whole point, dating all the way back to the beginning of this country, is that ideas and opinions can be shared and debated without being pre-vetted for us by the government or some outside group. That there's no boundary for ideas that are too terrible to be peacefully discussed. Only a boundary for violence, foreseeable harm, or legal accountability for deliberate, intentional abuse of speech like defamation. I am simplifying, but that's kind of how it works. The examples and the precedents are quite a contrast to Elon Musk's obvious overreaction to Don Lemon, which shredded whatever credibility he might have had left about free speech. That was nothing. The actual precedents are examples like civil libertarians at the ACLU defending the right of the KKK to speak and knowing that that's a tough position to hold, but saying that if it's peaceful speech, the First Amendment applies. Or lawyers who are Jewish going out of their way to litigate the legal fact that the First Amendment does apply to and protect the speech of neo-Nazis, as long as it is just speech. Historically, free speech has faced its greatest tests when times are tough, punishing dissent during the patriotic fervor of war, or the mob mentality, even amidst an otherwise healthy democracy, that can make it almost impossible for people to discuss dissenting ideas unless they want to give up kind of their whole standing in life, their jobs, their finances. That's not a good baseline for the free discussion of ideas, even bad ideas. And we still have those challenges today, but we also have some new ones with technology accelerating the speed and risk of certain speech that can quickly curdle into lies, conspiracy theories, and violence. We have these clever lawyers turned politicians who have figured out, as DeSantis did, that one tricky way to attack free speech is to first proclaim yourself its true defender. But that political ploy doesn't seem to be working on the Supreme Court, which again is going to make a big ruling on all this pretty soon. And it shouldn't work on the public because there are many actual First Amendment defenders across our history from jurists and attorneys to activists like Angela Davis and Bayard Rustin, to protesters with an artistic bent, to name one, the Abby Hoffman you see up there. These are people who actually defended free speech. They defended the rights of their own critics, and they didn't do it to win elections or to engage in vain, self-perpetuating billionaire popularity contests and trolling and dunking and all the other inanities that some people want to associate with the speech agenda today. No, many of the people you see right here, I just picked a few, sacrificed a whole lot more than that, not only to advocate what they believed in, but to do something quite uniquely First Amendment American in its tradition, which is to also defend your own critics. In a way, it can be quite an inspiring thing. We live in strange times, with billionaires pretending they're intellectual activists and ideologues pretending that their thing is advocating editorial tolerance, which doesn't really add up. So in these strange times, if we might just take a step back to keep our eyes on the facts, having fact-checked some of those issues in the conclusion of this report, let's hand off the mic and listen to some of the actual freedom pioneers whose wisdom on freedom of speech resonates today, perhaps more than ever. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. There's nothing I'd restrict. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. I don't make the distinction at all. I feel, as did the late Justice Douglas, that under the First Amendment, everything is protected. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, everything. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it. 